We are here with Trayvon Bamel. Um, of course, he's competing in the 100 meters this coming weekend. Um, just got entered last minute, but I mean, Bamel is obviously one of the best in the world already. Um, but so before I ask you a couple others, like how are you just feeling about this weekend coming into the 100 meters? I feel good. Just want to focus on the race, do what I came here to do, and then go home and get ready for some training. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so I was talking a little bit, we were talking a little bit about track clubs before. And so can you tell us how you feel about track clubs, right? You're in Tubbleweed Track Club. Um, so what are the dynamics in your club? And do you feel like y'all are an actual track club? Yeah, yeah. We feel like we're a track club. We work hard. We come every day with that mindset, the one to be great. Um, it's, fail, it's felt all over through our, through our camp from 160 up until 400s and hurdles like we all motivate each other and push each other so it's it's a bar you know amongst all athletes from all over that we have in our group nice nice um and so you've you come from uh you're from florida yeah. right you went to school in texas yeah. um and then you're, now you're back training in florida yeah. uh but can you talk about some of your role models growing up as you got into the sport of track and field and also as you've navigated through the sport so as long as i've been running track uh i started when i was four I really didn't have like a track like role model growing up. I always was inspired by like motivational speakers. Like a lot of people may see me talk about like Eric Thomas. So he was like the one person that really stuck with me and motivated me to keep going. He came to my high school. He spoke uh, the message about, you know, uh, what's the story about, you know, uh, as much as you want to breathe, like, you know, that whole, the whole, you know, one yeah, of the story yeah. about the guy being in the water and everything yeah, like that. So yeah. he gave that speech and I was like, man, that like pushed me to want to keep going. Uh, I studied a lot of like Tyson's uh, form growing up. Uh, that's one person I definitely inspired to be in those type of shoes. Uh, he was always a gamer, motivated. Uh, it got to the point that I felt like my running form almost mimicked his, you know, like it's crazy. I got like a picture of me and Tyson from 2015 coming out the blocks and it's literally same shin angles, hand position, everything. It was crazy. So he was definitely one of the people that I like wanted to be like growing up. Uh, but yeah, as far as like from adolescent time up into uh, college, I really didn't have too many role models that I looked up to in track and field, but it was people and icons in the world that inspired me. Kobe being one of them, that Mamba mentality to just go out and get it. That was one thing that pushed me day in and day out. And also like you're, you know, speaking about your role models, right? I think that is, I love what you said though, right? Because a lot of athletes do look to like, okay, this track athlete, this, that, whatever, but there's, the world is huge, right? And there's yeah. so many people who inspire you. Yeah. Um, but so growing up in Florida, and especially as, you know, a black man growing up in Florida, what were some of the struggles that you had to kind of overcome to get you to where you're at now? Oh, uh, so I grew up on the South Side, like, you know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people say those were things, but you know, anybody who know my background, like I come from the South Side, I come from the hood, I come from poverty, I ain't really have a lot growing up. Uh, kicked out of many schools, fighting, gang violence, all that. Like I dealt with police brutality from police breaking in my home and things like that. So I didn't dealt with all that. I didn't I didn't dealt with racism. Uh, obviously going to Texas is racism still in, in that state as well that I have dealt with from police officers, just the normal day-to-day -day people. Uh, but it, it, it strengthened those in those situations. Like I said, I'm a man of the gospel, I'm a man of the word, and I know that in this gospel, it tells us that we're gonna deal with these trials and things on a day-to-day -day basis. So for me, I just take it with a grain of salt. Like uh, Mark 13, 13 tells us like, look, the world hated me, they gonna hate you. So at the end of the day, I, I just take it for what it is. So I just keep pushing day in and day out. Right. That's powerful. And how do you kind of translate some of the things that you're doing, uh, that you're doing now, you know, after coming from that, you know, tough background from all the struggles you had, how do you translate that to some of the younger people who you might meet who you might interact with so when they get older right they can kind of take some of your lessons yeah oh, man, i mean i tell them to keep going at the end of the day you got people day in and day out wanting to rewrite and, and narrate your life uh, but at the end of the day they're not you right so i had to understand that my vessel is mine like i was blessed with this vessel so i keep pushing and keep striving for the things that i desire right and i leave faith in god to do whatever i need him to do and to get me through life so i would tell young athletes or even people in general that's going through this world like Never let nobody tell you what you can and can't do. Uh, you are the narrator of your life, uh, your faith basis, whatever it may be. I know everybody don't have the same faith in the same thing, but whatever you believe in, keep believing in, you obtain the things that you desire. Yes, I, I love it, I love it. And last question. So of course you're a 100 meter runner. You've of course done the 60 and you know, you. You kind of like straight away from the 200 it seems like you're not doing as much now but if you can compete in any other event on the track or in the field and it's none of those events that you've run in 
what would event would you do? Uh, I would want to do long jump. Uh, I feel like that was, that was one thing that I always said I would want to do if I wasn't like a sprinter. Uh, I think it's I think it's cool. It's one of those events where even like the celebrations is dope coming up out of sand. They be turned. So I like watching that at, uh, at a lot of the big beasts as well, like Dominies and Worlds and Olympics. So it, it's real cool to see that event go off. Uh, so that'll probably be the event I do. Right. What, what do you think you could jump? Man, I ain't even gonna lie to you. It, it'd be hard to say. Like I got balance. Like I, you know, I. 43, 44 vert, then obviously mm. with speed, like I, I know I could probably get some type of distance. There you go. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> All right, Trayvon Bramell, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for speaking with us. No problem.